with this mare, she's a multiple winner on the race course and she's a really willing girl. But obviously on the race course they don't care too much where they are putting the horse's heads. And she has this habit of carrying her horse head completely on the left hand side. And that makes her very slow to turn back to the right hand side. So what I'm trying to do a lot with her to start with is again with the side passing to use that inside leg and to get her like this just to drop her head onto the inside you can see it's slightly inside before I ask for the turn and that is getting her to turn in a much flatter way what's been happening is she's been ridden here without people taking enough notice of that and what's happening is she's coming up while she's turning and uh, she's also, because she's been forced on the race course, she has the tendency to want to go up in front, which is a really problematic thing for a horse. So to start with, what I'm going to do is just to get this horse to learn to stand, put her head on the inside without moving, and you can see the resistance there. So if she will just learn to stand first and put her head softly there, I take all my aids off her and let her just stand and understand that she can just stand there without having to back up, without having to do anything else. You can see very light um, pressure on the reins and I'm using fingers here to help her on the inside, not a pull with my arm. Once I've got her in the correct body position, then I can use an outside leg and this outside rein to help her turn flat to the inside like that. Now, as I said in the introduction, what I'm trying to help this horse do is to learn to step first with this inside leg because that's what she hasn't been doing. So once I've got her flexed onto the inside like this, she's perfect now with the outside leg. There's the leg step, step, and then move out. So that's the lesson that you have to teach this horse before you start to go to more advanced lessons. So step, step, move out. You, she's starting to really, after a few days, get this lesson. So here, just back her a sick there, step, step and go. And I back her just a fraction to get her weight onto her back legs. Now, you will see also on the back legs when I'm doing that, as she goes, as I back her and I go, there's the wrong leg moving first, do you see? And that would step on herself. So here, there's step, step and she's pushing off that back leg and carrying herself on the inside, just as a human being would be doing if they were work, walking to the right, of stepping off the left hand back leg and balancing yourself and transferring your weight to the right, not pushing off with the inside. So once she's got that feeling uncontained, because the barrier here is a problem for this horse, what I've got to be really careful of is that I never jam this horse into the poles. If I get too close here before I ask the turn, the poles themselves, the barrier is going to make her come up and over, okay, especially when I come in at a trot. But if I will give her just a little bit of room, there you can see me just bending her correctly. Here we come in. If I stop at this at a distance and now get that, she's very much more inclined to move forward and propel with the back legs rather than hop with the front legs. To the left hand side, here we are. Come in here, check, half a step back, there's a beautiful inside step. To the left hand side, she finds that so easy. She will always move the correct leg first. Here, you've got to bend her first. Now, step, step, and she's starting to get these lessons. Another really important thing in the use of the actual area of the arena is when you're asking these lessons to start with, the corner is an ideal place to, to work because when they step out, you still have a barrier, but it's not in the horse's face. Okay, so if I'm here, once I check up here, get the horse's head, now you can see she can move into the corner and on around, where if I go further away from the corner, what's gonna happen here is that once I stop, just get this horse's head on the inside, check here, when I make this turn here, there's still a barrier in front of me and she gets very much more jammed in there. You will see if I do that exact same maneuver, more into the corner, how much easier it is for the horse. You see here now, when I check and go forwards, 
Now she's got space to move in, but there's still a barrier helping her to make the turn, so I'm much lighter on my hands. Once she gets those ideas, then I can start to use the, the length of the arena and start to come in down here, where again, 45 degrees to the poles is a really good approach here, because when I check here, there, and she will turn very easily with space here to be able to move through. Don't get to where you are parallel to the rails. It's too much for a young horse. You can get there later with a, a more mature horse that's, that's better schooled. So if I'm 90 degrees to the rails here, it's a much bigger ask to get, and you can see how the horse unbalances when you do that. Where if I'm gonna give her the chance to learn, I'm gonna be at 45 degrees, check here and you can see how much easier that turn is for her. So once I've got all that right at a, trot, at a walk, then I'll start at a trot and once she gets it at a trot, I will then go to a canter. Just while I'm talking about this, a really important thing is how you're holding your reins. What I do is I bridge the left hand rein through these two fingers, like that. And I'm using this finger and this finger to hold those reins. So I set this rein at the length I want to work. This rein here is held between thumb and forefinger. And you will see when I want to turn right, I can use that to shorten up and to use a finger here to help. When I'm going to turn left, I just let the rein slide. I've anchored the left rein until the left rein is shorter. This is just a touch long. There we go. Now you see the correct rein is short and her head is in the correct position. So if I'm going to turn to the right, now I would use right aid, shorten these reins, use the finger here, you can see her resist a little. Now when she's put her head in the correct place, the reins are soft, I will now ask her to turn with the outside aid and you can see here that the neck rein, the outside rein is what's making her turn. Again here, open my hand, let this rein slide until this left aid on now, until she drops her head when she's in a good position, reins are soft, outside aid, outside rein asking her to turn. So her body position is crucial here to getting her to do the right things. Here's this rein anchored, I'm going to get into a trot now and start just very slowly getting this horse to understand what I'm asking. And there's this, with this finger able to help me to the right hand side. So, let's go to a trot. And you can see these reins are beautifully loose. This horse has really responded. Now I'm going to get her just to get that head on the inside. I'm using an inside aid and a slight inside rein. And this rein, is, the right rein is longer. And now that right rein as I take my hand across will be what makes her turn. When I'm going to turn now to the right hand side, you will see as I come out of this turn, don't keep your turn, go straight first. Now I'm going straight, okay, and I shorten up this rein, get her head correct first, and now ask for the turn. Don't ask for the turn, and there you can see that finger helping on the inside just to get the head where I want it. But don't ask for that turn until the head is in the correct position. We're going to now turn left, so I'll let this rein slide. Now my left rein is shorter, inside aid, get the horse's head where I want it, and then ask for the turn. And you can see a very smooth, easy turn for the horse. Now we're turning left, so my inside rein is slightly shorter. My hand is to the left, and this rein is what's making her turn. Okay, so straight on here. Get the head on the right side, bump with my right leg, and there's you can see her leave that head behind, and that's the side she's battling to. So I'm just going to help with my right hand, pushing forward with this one, so I've got a little tension here that I can give straight away with. There, okay? Just to get her bent correctly before I ask her to turn, and maybe with this hand slightly wider, just to keep that head on the inside. That's the lesson this horse has to learn before she does anything else. Again, I'm shortening the right hand rein, make a check up, half a step back, step, step, and push out. Now, eventually, what one's gonna do is ask her to step out into a canter, okay, and strike off immediately into a canter. But before you start to do that, make sure she can first do it at a trot. Come on, come on. 
and this horse really couldn't lead on this lead to start with so this is a big big improvement on her and you can see me here helping a lot with my right hand to get that head into the correct position so that when she's going along she's got her head in the right place when you pull on this right rein she wants to check she thinks that you're stopping her and she's got to learn just to put her head on the inside and go when the reins are soft and keep her head there so now you start to see the blending of the lessons of why it's so important to teach horses to put their head on the inside and leave it there. Now she's starting to get the feeling and she's moving forward very nicely. So once she's got that eye and you've balanced her, now whoa, you can see there, check, check and step out into a canter on that side. And also another thing just to remember is don't always do these stops in the same place. You can feel as I'm coming around this horse wanting to stop because she's used to being stopped there and I'm just going to do it in different places so she doesn't start to stop because she thinks that that's where she should stop. So right hand rein, whoa, come back, bend her. No, 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 I don't want that. I don't want that, come back, there we go, bend here, that's what I'm looking for, straight, straight off into a canter now, and there she's starting to put that head much more naturally to the right hand side for me, just do one last stop here, half a step back up, forward, and there she goes straight into a canter, using your right hand to help you. Whoa. There she goes, beautiful, beautiful. Give her time to make the moves. Don't force her to start with, because that's what makes these horses go up. Stand, stand, stand. Just get the patience as well. Stand, you don't have to do anything. Stand, stand. That's what I want. Now, she's in a snaffle, okay, because any gag or pelham tends to accentuate the up, where the snaffle might, come on, stand up. Got to teach this patience as well, that this horse learns to stand, okay. She's never done that on the race course and learned to stand, so this is as important a part of the lesson as any of the other things you're teaching, that they learn when you're doing nothing, that they will just stand and do nothing, okay. But I'm using a snaffle on her and it's got a slight twist in it to make it a stronger snaffle because she doesn't have a wonderful mouth. But she's learning to stop very nicely on the snaffle. But what it's not doing is, like a gag would do, pick her up. A pelham also tends to pick them up. So I'm having to work with a whole lot of different problems here. And the solutions are slow and, and, and uh, not easy to find. I've played around with different bits. This is the one that she's easiest on and will stay on the ground with.